it's me finally got around to filming another video for you i know i haven't done one for ages but it's been a bit crazy hasn't it with all this lockdown stuff how are you all doing how are you all keeping i know it's a bit crazy um everything's a bit surreal at the moment we're all locked down together at the moment me mark and the kids and um we're all getting under each other's feet and on each other's nerves but hey ho it's better to be in here and be safe than anywhere else i hope you guys are all staying as safe as you possibly can and thank you to those of you that are going out to work and still keeping the country running because i know it must be super scary for you because it's it's scary for us and we're you know we're safe and, and sound inside of our houses we as a country do appreciate it um, I certainly speak for myself and for my family. It's much appreciated. Anyway, on with the video. Um, skincare chit chat. So I promised it ages ago. I'm finally getting around to doing it and we're going to do this. If you've got problem skin, then this is the video for you. If you haven't got problem skin and you want to just uh, learn a bit more about your um, day to day cleansing routine then keep watching because there are lots of bits and bobs that are all tried and tested everything i'm going to talk to you about today i've tried myself i've used it myself some of them i've even used for years so uh, rest assured that everything i show you um is recommended um primarily by testing myself so uh, the first thing i want to talk to you about is um cleansing now when people take their makeup off most take it off with a wipe i use the simple cleansing wipes i love the simple range because there's nothing in there there's no nasty chemicals there's no parabens or, or whatever it is that they're called um i'll just mention i am not a dermatologist or a skin specialist so um whatever i say is just from my experience and i'm not trained in that area um, and I don't know everything there is to know about the chemicals that are in these products, but I do know a few bits and bobs. Um, <laughs> so I'll try my best. So anyway, the simple cleansing wipes. But if you're taking your makeup off with wipes, bear in mind that it's not going to lift all the dirt off your skin. So it's important. I know sometimes when we've been out to the pub and we come back, at most, taking your makeup off is an achievement because most people will just flop on bed and go to sleep and I've done it myself, trust me, even with a full face of makeup and still got my lashes on. We've all been there, we've all done that. Um, but I do, because I suffer with um, acne prone skin and I am, um, I do have a tendency to break out, I like to try and take my makeup off when I can. So um, if I do take my makeup off at night, I'll use wipes, but I like to soak the wipes in micellar water. Um, this is the Garnier Micellar Cleansing Water. Um, this is just a cheap, small bottle. You can spend as much money as you want, but they're all basically the same, so I wouldn't. I would just buy the cheapest. Um, but soaking the wipe in micellar water, you've got more chance of getting that makeup off than you have if you're just using a wipe. Um, but even so, if you can at all times, I would recommend having a wash afterwards using a cleansing, um, a cleansing soap like a face wash. Like I like the simple face wash um, again because it's not fragrance. There's nothing in it. It's good for sensitive skin. Even if it's just using that, just lather it up. Give your face a good wash with that because if you don't get all that dirt off your face it's going to block your pores and then you're going to end up with problem skin whereas you might have not had it before so anyway um taking eye makeup off on the other hand there are a lot of wipes and the micellar water even claims to remove waterproof makeup but i've never had that um experience it does not um so i would recommend using a different oil based makeup remover to remove waterproof eye makeup or even your eye makeup because your eye is such a sensitive area the less rubbing that you do there the better um i really like this one this is the nivea double effect eye makeup remover and you can see that it's kind of it's separated you've got the liquid here and then all the oil sits at the bottom so when you use it you have to give it a good shake and then when your fluid looks like that, that's when it's okay to use. And I, I soak two cotton pads in the uh, the Nivea Double Effect Eye Makeup Remover and I put them on my eyes and I sort of just leave them there for a few seconds so it can soak in. And then you, you literally just rub it off and it comes off just like that. There's no sort of like harsh rubbing. You do have to sort of like 
rub at it a little bit but there's no harsh rubbing so you've got less chance of damaging the eye around your, uh, the skin around your eye um so yeah use a decent quality eye makeup remover preferably an oil-based one particularly if you're using waterproof mascara um so a cleansing routine then as you all know cleansing routines tend to consist of a cleanser a toner and a moisturizer um, the most important two out of the three is definitely a cleanser and a moisturiser. Um, the myth of using a moisturiser if you've got not got oily skin is okay, but don't use one if you've got oily skin. That's not true. Everyone should use a moisturiser of some level, even if you've got super acne prone, oily skin, because if you can reduce the risk of having acne, you're being proactive about it. And then anything that you have after that can be treated with other things, especially if it's serious enough for you to warrant seeing your GP or a dermatologist. But you have to do everything you physically can. Um, if it's hormonal, I take a, a contraceptive pill called Yasmin, which specifically targets uh, hormonal acne, which I suffer terribly with and have done oh, since I was 11. So I've had it for ages and this has been the only pill that's calmed it down. And I still get breakouts on my chin and under my jawline, which is a pain in the arse, but it's better than having it all over my face. <laughs> and that's Yasmin if you want to, um, if you need to ask your doctor about it. Uh, it's dead expensive and they don't hand it out willy nilly. So you might have to fight for it, but do a bit of research. It's really good uh, for me anyway. Um, so, if you are struggling with oily skin, then still moisturise your face because if you have um, a breakout, it could possibly be due to the fact that your dry skin is crying out for moisture. So what it will do is produce a lot of oil and then your, um, your pores get blocked and that's when you end up with breakouts and things. So eliminating that as a risk still moisturising when you've got acne prone skin you're getting rid of that risk of it being from having dry skin and your skin crying out for some moisture um, even when you've got oily acne prone skin it's still good to moisturise because some topical treatments that you use can be really drying on your skin if you're using a targeted um, acid like a salicylic glycolic or hyaluronic acid to target your acne then any of them could potentially dry your skin out. So using a, a decent moisturiser, again, reduces that risk. Um, cleansing your face, like I said, like I mentioned first, a simple face wipe isn't sufficient to remove all the dirt from your face, especially if you've been wearing a full face of makeup. So soaking it in micellar water, having a wash with, um, you know, washing with something like the simple face wash or whatever your favourite face wash is. Um, again, it's recommended twice a day, um, morning and evening, to wash your face. That's common knowledge and you don't need me to tell you that. Um, if you do want to go the whole hog and use the toner, the second step, then there are loads of toners on the market that you can try. Um, apparently, they close the pores and shrink the pores or whatever they do. I've never had any success with any sort of toner. Uh, that, that works to do that. I don't believe that you can actually physically shrink pores. So in your, your genetics, if your mum's got large pores, we've had this conversation before, haven't we? If your mum's got large pores, you might have large pores and it's just a genetic thing and there's nothing you can do about it. I am sorry to tell you that. Um, so anyway, um, <clears throat> if you want to find a toner, go and have a look to your heart's content, but it's not something that I put in my routine. The, easy, the simplest, easiest way of closing your pores after you've had a wash is to splash your face with cold water. Um, and that's what I tend to do. I'll have a wash splash my face with cold water and then I moisturise. Um, and then after I've moisturised, I will use any treatments that I put on. Sometimes I'll put them on before I moisturise. It doesn't really matter, in my experience, whichever way around to do it. So let's have a chat about a couple of different moisturisers then. I've got absolutely loads of those. Um, I love trying different ones. I switch between different ones on a daily basis, whether I look in the mirror and think, my God, you are spotty, I'd use one. And then, or if I look in the mirror and think, oh my God, you look really old, then I'll, I'll use like one that's anti-aging or something like that. So I've got quite a few different ones. Um, the main one that I use, and um, I let the kids use it, is the Simple Moisturiser. They do two varieties of this one. There's a Rich Moisturiser, which is what I've got here. 
and they do a light one as well. So if you are particularly oily, I'd recommend using the, the lighter moisturiser that's perhaps not as, as oily as this one. Um, if you've got dry skin or aging skin, which of course is going to mean you've got less elasticity in your skin and it's going to be drier, then using the rich one is probably for you. I like to use this one and it's, it's safe on the kids' skin. Like I say, it's got nothing nasty in it anyway. Um, that's just a basic, general, all-round good one. Um, using one that's slightly targeting um, anti-aging, you know, it's got the anti-aging factors in it, targeting aging skin is absolutely fine. I've got a couple that I use. This is the Nivea Q10 Power Anti-Wrinkle Porifining Day Cream. Um, this has got SPF in it. It's SPF 15. Apparently, it's pore refining. Again, no idea if that's the truth or not because I've never had any experience of that, that side of things working. Um and I like to use that, like I say, when I look in the mirror and think, my God, Tina, you look dead old. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, but mostly I use the simple one or uh, this one I've, I found recently and I did post about it the other day. It's the Walida Skin Food. This is fantastic for dry skin, but it's not a moisturiser I would recommend using on the daily. I'd kind of use it if you are really struggling with dry patches. Um, Jake, my son, he's nine years old. Bless him. He has got this weird facial eczema where he'll get patches, yes, but he also breaks out really bad. And, and it's not nice at nine years old to have cystic acne on your chin. Um, he gets them on his forehead as well. But on, on the sides of his nose, um, I found that it's got really, really dry patches. It feels almost like sandpaper. And we've tried so many different moisturizers, um, the, the simple moisturizer, we've tried that and we've had no joy with anything. But I've read some articles on the Walida Skin Food and I thought, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a go. This is a 75ml and I got this from Look Fantastic. Um, Google Look Fantastic and it will pop up. I can't remember whether it's .com or .co.uk. Um, £12.95 this was for the 75ml. But they do do a smaller version, which is about eight quid. So if you wanted to try it, then um, I'd recommend probably having the smaller one. But I do absolutely love it and I recommend it. It's fantastic. I used that on Jake's nose where he had like the sandpaper feeling. It cleared it up overnight. He got up the next day and it was reduced by 90%. You can use it on your hands. You can use it on your feet, on your elbows, on your knees, any sort of really dry patches. It is a very thick cream though, almost greasy, but kind of like it not greasy. It's a really thick cream and it takes a long time to absorb into the skin. Um, so again, it's not something you could wear under makeup or not even if you want to wear it on the daily because it does take a long time to sink in or right before bed. You know, you don't want to get it on your, your pillows. Um, but what it does is phenomenal and it makes a massive difference. And that's uh, what I'd recommend if you've got super dry skin with dry patches. I also like to use it as an eye cream as well sometimes. Um, like when I've been in the shower and my skin's like, you know how your skin goes really tight when you've been in the shower, when you've had a wash or whatever. Um, like I like to use it under my eyes because that seems to be my driest area under there. So I'll just pop a bit under there. Um, I do really like that. Another moisturiser that I've used is the Overnight Clearing Serum. Um, I use this as a moisturiser when I have particularly clogged up skin. And you can tell that because you'll have lots of pimples trying to come to the surface. Um, you know, and I feel like it's sort of like needing a detox. Um, this is great, but be warned, what it does is bring out all the pimples. It brings them all up to the surface and it sort of purges your skin. So you go through a process of about seven days where you're getting these breakouts and then they'll subside and then a few more will come up and then they'll subside before you get to a point where it's cleared properly. If you've got particularly clogged up skin if you haven't you'll find that it probably doesn't make any difference but if like me you do suffer then it does take a while for it to purge your skin properly but whilst it does that it keeps them nice and calm because it's got witch hazel in it um and so it's nice and it's anti-back as well so you don't have to worry about any infections or anything like that um and it's it's safe for the skin it's natural it's natural naturally occurring product um but it, uh, it has a calming, soothing effect on the pimples. So um, especially me where it's quite cystic, they can get quite painful. But using something like that will help it to keep nice and calm and takes a lot of that inflammation down. So that's another one that I like. Um, 
<laughs> now this isn't a moisturizer, it's actually a balm. This is from B&M and it's the balm. It's the Wonder Balm and it really is a, a Wonder Balm. It's got natural fruit extract in it. It is very similar to Vaseline, but it's a, it's got all these sort of fruit extracts in it. And it does for me what I don't think I've had with Vaseline. So if you're struggling to grow your eyebrows, if like me, you overplucked when you were a teenager and you just had a really tiny thin line of hairs, which was disastrous, but you know, some of us did it. Some of us were stupid like me. Um, I've been trying to grow them back for a long time. What I do is I take the, this Wonder Balm. Again, it's like Vaseline, so it's very oily. It's like an oily balm. Um, I, I pop a bit out the tube. I put it on a spoolie like this, just a normal spoolie. I, I rub it into there and then I'll brush that through my brows after I've moisturised. I brush it through my brows and I kind of like give it a really good brush so I'll brush it through and then I kind of rub it in and brush it through again and I use it on my eyelashes as well if you wear false eyelashes a lot you might have noticed that you have a tendency to pull them out when you take your eyelashes off or they don't grow very well um give yourself a break from the eyelashes and get some of the wonder balm or I guess you could use Vaseline it might work the same I'm not sure it hasn't for me I tend I've found that this tends to be the better option it's like £1.50 from B&M anyway, so it's not like you're outlaying a massive amount of money for it. Um, and I comb that through my eyelashes as well, and I do that top and bottom lashes. And literally after about, a, I think it was about a fortnight, a fortnight of doing that every day, like every evening before bed after I'd had a wash, made such a big difference. I could, like I could, I could, I could see the growth starting on my eyebrows where previously I've had patches that I could never grow back and I could see the growth starting there um, and since then I've successfully managed to get a few hairs back in those um, bald patches. Uh, my eyelashes are a lot fuller now as well from using um, the balm so that's a that's a good little product to use and I say like I say I use that for my eyebrows and for my eyelashes but it, it, it's something that you can use on skin you can use it as a lip balm you can use it as a hand balm or on your cuticles like for your nails um so it's, it's basically like vaseline you can use it anywhere for any of those things that you normally use a vaseline for um another really good moisturizer but this is slightly pricier this is the apothecary natural collection um and this was about 22 pounds and it's only 60 mils and it smells like cucumber but i guess if you smell it for too long it smells like musty cucumbers which is a bit weird, I know, quite bizarre, uh, but it's phenomenal for your skin. It sinks in really quickly, so your skin just sucks it all up and it leaves your skin really, really smooth. So it's fantastic for using before uh, makeup, just like the um, Embryo Lease. This is a bit sort of more mattifying. I tend to find you don't get that dewy finish with the Apothecary Moisturiser, whereas you do with the Embryo Lease. Um, 22 pounds plus like 13 pounds so it's a toss-up really for me which one i like to use again if somebody's got particularly oily skin i'd rather use the apothecary on them than i would the embryo release because that's a dewy moisturizer um but because dewy skin is quite in at the moment i tend to have dry skin anyway i like to use the embryo embryo release I'm, I'm nearly out of it i love it that much i've not had it long um Anyway, those are my two favourites for putting under 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 moisturiser, under foundation. Um, targeting um, problem areas. So, like I've said to you, I am acne prone. If I have a breakout, mostly most likely hormonal, because that's what I tend to suffer with. If I do have a breakout, I do have a couple of products that I use. One that me and the kids use is um, this witch hazel blemish stick. And it's just a stick of witch hazel stuff. And it's like a, it's sort of like a, a cream that turns to liquid as soon as you touch it. As soon as it heats up, it goes liquidy. So it sinks in really quickly on the skin and it dries and it helps to dry out the spot. So if you've got a particularly nasty one, I just pop a bit of that on and then overnight it'll help to dry it out. Um, if it's an open spot, it does sting, and me and the kids have been jumping around before when we've used it. But it, it's nice, and because it's antiseptic as well, like uh, witch hazel is a naturally um, antiseptic 
uh, product so it uh, it does help to keep that area clean as well which of course is a bonus for the filthy children <laughs> um also you may have heard of um the different acids and you probably won't know too much about them and sometimes it sounds a bit of gibberish but there are different acids that you can use for different problems on your face for instance acne prone skin salicylic acid hyaluronic acid glycolic acid they're all acids that can help to um that can help relieve some of those problems um with acne prone skin Hyaluronic acid and glycolic acid are also good acids for anti-aging. So the glycolic acid is like an exfoliant and exfoliating your skin, whether it's acne prone or for um, anti-aging purposes, is always a good thing because um, if it's for anti-aging, things like fine lines as well, it's like having dermabrasion, you're, you're sort of taking away layers of skin and it looks, it looks fresher, it looks brighter and the fine lines can be reduced. Hyaluronic acid is a plumper and a hydrator. So again, for anti-aging purposes, it helps to plump up the skin um, and it helps with um, moisture as well. So uh, again, if for anti-aging, it's a good thing. Um, salicylic acid, however, is great for acne prone skin. Um, it helps to even, even your complexion. And one of my favourite brands, apart from The Ordinary, which I use their foundation, they're fantastic. They do fantastic acids and they're very cheap as well. Um, whereas Nip and Fab is very expensive. Uh, the products range between 10 and £30. Pounds. You can buy these from Boots and Superdrug, I think. Uh, but I do really like them. Um, I tend to find that this works particularly well. This is an extra large bottle of the salicylic tonic. Um, it's a 2% salicylic acid. And I use this when I've got a breakout, but I, I only use it sort of once or twice a week because it can be quite harsh and quite drying on the skin. Even though it does contain hyaluronic acid and panthenol as well, which are both moisturisers, I don't feel that those chemicals do enough moisturising when I've used this. I, I have to use it with a moisturiser, otherwise it'll really dry it out and then I'm prone to having even more, bre uh, more breakouts. So... <clears throat> Just popping it on a, uh, you know, cleansing is normal, popping it on a cotton pad and just sweeping it over your face in an evening um, is sufficient enough. Again, twice a week, probably maximum when I'm suffering with uh, breakouts. Um, but those are both of those, the witch hazel blemish stick and the salicylic acid are both great treatments for when you're really suffering with breakouts. Um, if it's just an anti-aging thing, then... Um, using products that do contain hyaluronic or glycolic acid um, are going to be good as part of your cleansing and moisturising routine and obviously getting yourself a really good night cream that contains hyaluronic acid um, and a good day cream. Um, glycolic acid, the Nip and Fab do a pot of glycolic pads which is uh, obviously exfoliating pads um, but it's just a tonic so there's no like harsh um, like uh, media in it like you know the St Ives apricot scrub it's like sort of it's what you would imagine a scrub to be quite coarse bits and I do like using that even though skin specialists and dermatologists will tell you it's terrible I do like using that I use it about three times a week and uh, it makes my skin super smooth and it gets rid of any dry flaky patches that I've had from having a breakout but um the glycolic acid is is the equivalent of that in a tonic um, and it helps to reduce the appearance of fine lines and um, it brightens dull skin um, and they do pads that it's it's quite an extreme amount of glycolic acid in it um, but it, they're about 15 quid from Superdrug they are the glycolic extreme exfoliating pads um, again quite expensive but they do I've, I've run out unfortunately but they do work really well I just use one of the pads um, at night once or twice a week, well, no, so two or three times a week with the pads, really, just to exfoliate and brighten my skin. Um, but you should only really use it at night because using a high-strength acid like that in the daytime, it can have compl cause complications with the sun. Um, you can be prone to uh, the UV rays, even more so than normal. Um, so anyway, going on to face masks. There are so many different face masks out on the market that it's hard to choose from, um, from the clay masks to the peel-off masks and the, these that claim to do this, that and the other. Um, 
most of them do exactly the same thing um but there are a couple that i swear by and i, I don't really use any of the others um a moisturising face mask that I love, you know, I've mentioned it so many times, the Simple Range, because there's no harsh chemicals in them, they're fragrance free, so they're great for sensitive skin. This is the Rich Moisture Face Mask, so it's a sheet mask, and it's basically like the moisturiser, but it's a, um, a more intense version of, and it's full of serum, and you leave it on for about 15 minutes and rub in, sort of massage in any of the stuff that's left on your face after. And it's fantastic if you're having a really bad bout of dry skin, which I tend to find happens in, in the midst of summer when it's really hot or in the winter when it's really cold and I get chapped skin. Like, you know, I get chapped lips, like really chapped skin. It goes dry and very red. Um, so they're really good for that. We spoke about toner earlier. Um, obviously, it's not something that I use religiously. You can if you want to, but I do like to use a toning mask once or twice a week. And my absolute favourite at the moment, and it's not just because I'm biased, because I love candy cosmetics. This is the Candy Skin Workout Face Mask. And it's a toning face mask. And it contains snail secretion filtrate, which sounds a bit gross because then I just think about snail slime all over my face, but it's fantastic um, because it's a toning mask. It tightens your skin, it pulls all your pores in um, and it leaves your skin feeling really nice and glowy. So I like to use this before I go on a night out. I'll use this after I've had a shower before I do my makeup. I love those. They're the two sheet masks that I use. I use a moisturising one and I use a toning one once or twice a week. There's really no need for anything else. Apart from some additional products that I use that are sort of like masks. Um, you can get this brand from B&M, which is fantastic because they're just down the road from me and they're dirt cheap. <laughs> Although at the moment you can't get in because the queues are right around the car park, but anyway. Uh, this is Skin Techniques and they do the charcoal nose pore strips the Gold Hydrogel Collagen Eye Mask and the Gold Hydrogel Collagen Lip Mask. These are the three things alongside my sheet mask that I use. Um, the, so the charcoal nose pore strips, these were a kind of thing that was kind of popular in the 90s, I remember when I was at school. Um, they didn't actually do anything though, which was bizarre, but we all used them for a laugh. These ones do actually do something. So first of all, they're charcoal and that activates when the skin is wet and it will start to go black, but that's good because the charcoal will detoxify any nasties that you've got on your nose. Um, and also pull out any blackheads or whiteheads or anything that's uh, that, that's in there. Um, we call them wiggly worms. It's a buildup of oil in your pores, in your nose. Uh, it's not dirt, it's not... Um, it, it's uh, not pus or anything because sometimes if you squeeze your nose you'll get these white wiggly worms that's what we, what we call them white wiggly worms come out but it's actually just a build up of oil on your nose because that tends to be the oiliest area and these are good for removing that obviously removing blackheads and detoxifying that whole area um what you do is you wet your skin damp your skin first pop the nose strip on once it's fully wet you leave it for 15 minutes and then it'll go dry. Once it's dry, you peel it off very slowly. You don't want to rip it off quickly like you would a wax strip because the, um, the slower you do it, the more chance you have of pulling the nasties out of your nose. If you do it quickly, you might just miss it completely. So you pull it off nice and slowly. And you know, you see the YouTube videos where they show you the after product, they show you the nose strip after and you can see all the, the blackheads and things on them. And you think you never get that. And you're never gonna, you're never gonna see that on a normal pore strip, are you? But you do with these, when you take it off, you can see all that crap on the strip that you've pulled out your nose. So it's like dead satisfying, like watching a pimple popping video. <laughs> anyway, um, the uh, Hydrogel Collagen Eye Mask, anything that says it's got collagen in it is going to be a, is, is good for aging skin. So me being in my 30s, I thought it was time to start using things like this. So I've been using the Lip and Eye Masks. Um, they're, they're, they're good for anybody really, if you're in your 20s even, 20s, 30s, whatever, um, because the skin around your eyes is so sensitive, it's the first place that you're going to lose moisture and elasticity. So using anything that's got collagen in it, or even if it was like a hyaluronic sort of eye cream or something like that, is going to be good for that area around your skin. And I like to use the eye... Um, the eye masks, they look like this. I'll show you. They're sort of like two little 
two little patches there um i use i like to use these because as you know i do my eye makeup before i do my foundation so i'll pop these on on clean skin whilst i'm doing my eye makeup then i'll take them off massage in the um excess product and then put my foundation on and it keep it just plumps up that area underneath your eyes which i suffer with terribly which is why i've got such black eyes dark circles are the bane of my life um a similar thing happens with the um the lip mask um i'll show you these i think they're really cool i've oh, got it the wrong way up <laughs> these um these are great for plumping up your lips now what i recommend doing before you use that is using a decent lip scrub barry m do a lip scrub it's dead cheap they do a marshmallow one or a watermelon one i think because i've got the watermelon one and it's just like a sugar scrub and if you massage that into your lips for about a minute um and then just wash it off rinse it off with some water um and it, it leaves your lips feeling really soft and smooth because it takes away all the dead skin and also because you've rubbed it in you've massaged your lips it brings all the blood up to the surface which plumps them up and then if you use a really good moisturizing collagen lip mask like the gold hydrogel skin techniques lip mask um that'll put even more good stuff in there which will keep them nice and plump so again, if you're going on a night out and you want to treat yourself and do the best that you can for your skin, I love doing things like that. I love having, or just having like a pamper, um, a sheet mask, eye mask, lip mask, those kind of things. Pore strips for your nose. Um, right, I think that's all the products that I've got. I do want to show you this handy little tool I've got. This is a jade roller. And um, if you're using moisturiser or something like that, um, and it's, it's ever so nice to give your face a massage with, there's two little sides to it so you can get into your eye area, um, but it feels nice on the skin. And that's, that's good for plumping up your skin as well because it brings the blood to the surface. It's like, like we said about massaging your lips. You're massaging your face with a jade roller, so it's gonna plump it up and um, it's good for anti-aging and uh, brightening up your skin, bringing all the blood to the surface. So that's that. Anyway, um, the other things that I wanted to tell you about, so um, I don't know if you've seen the posts that I posted a week or so ago when I launched my lash brand, my um, new lash brand. It's called K-Lash, and I've bought my first style of lashes out, which are the Barbie lashes. I've got this nice little holographic packaging. They are £6.50, um, including postage. You can order them by dropping me a message and giving me your details and transferring the payment either by PayPal, friends and family or by bank transfer. Um, and the postage is first class, takes two to three days. They are 3D, wispy, vegan, cruelty-free, handmade lashes and um what the reason that we came up with these was because the lash band is thin but you've still got a nice long wispy lash what i found with long wispy lashes is that um i'm trying to i'm trying to show you um how long they are but it's really difficult to get the angle right oh so you can kind of see it like that look um the, the problem with long wispy lashes is that the lash band does normally have to be quite thick and I cannot stand thick lash bands because not only are they difficult to put on, they're really uncomfortable whilst you're wearing them as well. Like the, um, you know, where you get the corner of them or stick into the corner of your eye and it, it's like a sharp pain, isn't it? And they're uncomfortable to wear. So um, these, these lashes, the Barbie lash has got a thin lash band. It's a long wispy lash with a thin lash band. So you're not, they're not uncomfortable and the lash band isn't too thick. So they're still nice um, and easy to apply. They are quite long in width um, and I've left them like that. I didn't have them any shorter because everyone has a different eye shape. Some people, they will fit straight away. I have to trim them just a little bit. I just have to take just like a millimeter off of um, the end. If you do cut them down, you should always cut from the outside. Don't cut from the inside because the inside has a naturally shorter lash to keep the angle of the lash right. So it still looks right. Um, so if you do trim them, always trim them from the outside. 
So if you'd like to purchase those, just drop me a message. Please support my new little business. Um, if you don't want to buy any, just give it a, a share on Facebook for me. That would be excellent if you can, please. Especially now, it's a really difficult time at the moment. Neither me or Mark are working. So um, we're finding it particularly hard. But, um, you know, there's a, there, there are a few things I can do like my, with my lash brand. I'm also... Um, I've not really had much interest, which is surprising, but I've also um, asked you guys if you want to do um, video lessons because I normally teach and I do have a couple of clients that I teach um, that come to me for lessons, but obviously that's not possible at the moment. So I've been offering, um, well, I've started to offer video lessons. Now, these video lessons will be between one and two hours. They are only five pounds. A normal lesson here, um, with me will cost you £50 for two hours. I'm offering these lessons just for £5 because we're all in a bit of a pickle at the moment and um, you're not getting the same quality because it's over video, uh, but it's a fiver and uh, there will be a different lesson each time. You can pick and choose what you want to learn. You can sign up for one of them and then not do the next. There'll be a different one each time and you'll have to keep check on my Facebook page to find out what it is that we're going to be doing in that particular lesson. Um, it'll come out a few days before the lesson takes place. They'll be on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays um, at various times, depending on what I'm doing. And uh, the video, once it's been filmed, you can watch it live because it will be via Facebook Live or you can um, view it with up to seven days. Uh, you'll be, once you've paid for the lesson, you'll be invited to um, a private event page where the video will go live um, and it will remain on there for seven days. So if you can't watch it live, you will be able to catch up with it at some point within seven days. So if you fancy doing that, please do let me know. It's something I've thought long and hard about and uh, it would help me out massively during this time. And it's also going to give you guys something to do. And I know some of you have been really gutted about not being able to come and have your makeup done um, or come for your lessons because I had a few girls that were doing really well um, and they feel like they're taking a step back because they've uh, had to miss a couple of lessons. But these Facebook Live lessons, whilst they're not exactly the same, they might just be able to give you a step in the right direction for now. Um, also... We did a poll uh, the other day, which was um, what you guys want to see. Do you want to see the bold, the bright, the weird, the wonderful that I normally post? Or, or do you want to see more of a wearable glam? Kind of like what I'm I'm wearing today. Um, and the results so far have been the majority of you want to see more of the wearable glam. So whilst my niche is bold and bright and weird and wonderful, I am going to continue to do that. But I thought I'd go ahead and do a mini series of wearable glam looks, about four or five different looks of um, sort of a full face. That's what we're going to do. I've, I've done this one today, um, which I will post uh, a wearable uh, glam look that I'm going to name it DIY so it's going to be something you yourself can do at home and if you want a tutorial on that specific look when it's posted let me know and I will film one for you um, so they're going to be looks that you can carry off yourself that you can have a go at yourself if you want to um, again it's going to be a little mini series and then I'm going to be back to my weird and wonderful uh, eye looks because that's me that's what I do and uh, I can't break away from colour for too long because let me just show you. Look at my new box of lipsticks. This is a Jeffree Star um, Equality set. And it's rainbow lipsticks. How awesome are they? It's got all the colours of the rainbow. Um, the good thing about liquid lipsticks is that you can use them as eyeliners as well, which is, of course, awesome for the crazy looks that I do. Anyway... Uh, I've got loads of new kit that I've added to my um, kit. <laughs> I've got loads of new products that I've added to my kit and I want to show you. So I might do another video of the new stuff that I've got because I'm sure everybody loves looking at colourful palettes and things. Uh, if you don't, that's your loss. If you do, then keep watching. <laughs> anyway, I'm rambling now, so I'm going to go. Please all stay safe. Stay at home. Look after yourselves. Look after your babies. Keep safe and cherish what you've got at the moment. Um, lots of people have lost loved ones and it's hard. This virus is serious. 
So stay safe, look after each other, keep your chin up. And if anybody needs a chat, I am always at the other end of the phone or the other end of a message. I'm always here for any of you that need to talk. Um, I know how hard can it, it can be, particularly at the moment. It's a very uncertain time. So look after yourselves and uh, let me know if you've liked this video. Give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, I'm very sorry about that. I know that I'm rambling, so I'm going to shoot. I'll see you later. Goodbye.